Here's an envelope. But that's not the one we want to discuss right now. It's this one. They both have something in common. They both can bring some changes and surprises. Let's dive into the envelopes within Program Edit. Before MPC becomes the main focus, let me quickly explain what an envelope is from my own point of view. An envelope is simply the very powerful way of modulating a behavior of a sample. It could also modulate application of effects. We'll get to that later. You can find it in pretty much every DAW, synth, or other various devices. If you ever had a privilege of using any variants of Reason, that software is full of it. Pretty much all the devices have it. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Reason, let me know in the comments. Today we're going to focus on the simplest form of an envelope, represented by the following section of program edit. To be exact, the first tab called Env App, which is Amplitude Envelope. First column of the screen directly relates to the global level and pan values, previously discussed in the very first video of that series. I will just quickly mention that adjusting any of those two values on this screen will be reflected on the global screen as well. There are two main types of envelopes available here, and that will continue throughout all three envelope tabs. The first one is AD, which is short for Attack Decay. As the name suggests, we have two values to play with here. Attack, which controls sample's behavior after the pad is pressed. When set to zero or all the way to the left, by pressing the pad, we initiate the playback of the sample at peak level. By changing the parameter, ultimately moving the little attack indicator closer to the middle, we introduce a fade-in effect. So the playback of the sample starts from zero velocity and gradually increases until it reaches the peak point. You can control how quickly that process takes by changing the A shape. Now for the decay, it does quite the opposite. It controls how the sample fades out, and this can also be fine adjusted by changing, this time, you guessed it, B shape value. If you notice, right in the middle, we can toggle between start and end. By default, end is selected. Depending on the mode chosen, results are slightly different. For instance, if we're after a very quick decay on the sample, we alter the setting on end mode. But if you'd like the sample to start with full velocity, but fade out more gradually, start would be your go-to option. To hear the subtle differences first, I would encourage you to load a slightly longer sample and play with the graph a little bit. Now to more sophisticated velocity modulation over time, attack, hold, decay, suspend, or AHDS comes in play. Just like before, we can alter attack and decay and also their shape but this time we can control two more parameters. By changing the hold percentage, we can determine how long the sample is played at its highest velocity value after it reached it, finishing the attack process. Immediately after the percentage of hold is reached, the decay starts. But here, using the sustain parameter, we can determine whether the decay is happening like we know it, meaning to the complete silence of the sample, or the sample fades out to a set by us velocity value and stay there until the sample's playback is finished, never reaching the zero. By changing the decay value, we can have a gradual fade down or sharp velocity jump from the highest peak to the lower sustain value. By setting both hold and sustain values to zero, velocity modulation occurs similar to the first mode, attack and decay. So it basically defeats the purpose of being in this mode in the first place if you want to use that. All adjustments to the envelope can be done from this or this screen, whichever you prefer most, or in fact how exact you want to go with setting the values. The very last column refers to modulating amplitude, attack and pan depending on how hard we tap on the pad, despite global pad sensitivity settings. If amp is set to zero on every pad, no matter how hard you press it, sample plays back with full velocity. Amp attack lets us determine if sample fades in or plays out loud from the start, depending on how hard we engage with it. Keep in mind that if the amp is set to 127, you will not really hear the effect. So turn it down and let the amp attack do its job. Pan controls where in the stereo field sample appears depending on how hard we tap on the pad. Light tap sends it to the left channel, while hard smash sends it to the right one. Here you have to be very precise to have the sample playback centralized, but you can always turn the values down and have the pan modulation appear very south. 
Remember that you can mix and match those parameters together. For instance, going extreme, you can set the amp to 127 and pan to 127 and have the sample play pretty quietly while being sent to the left channel. And then destroying the right channel by hard pressing. As always, your imagination is really the limit to how you can use those parameters. Now you know the basic principle of how the envelope works. In this example, as an overtime velocity modulator, or creative fade in and out. In the next video, we'll discover, well, you gotta come back for that one. Thanks for staying till the end. As always, hit the like button if you liked it. If I missed something or you have some questions, pop them down in the comment section below. Consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with the new releases. And to support the channel even further, I encourage visiting my Patreon page. You can also just buy me a coffee. And that's it for now. This session is over.